Here I am, entering the world of Elden Ring and Souls-like games for the first time as a complete noob. Right out of the gate, I'm met by this guy who makes fun of me for being maidenless. Asking me, what is the plan? Right. We take that guy's horse, ride over to the castle, go inside, take care of markets, grab our maiden, ride back here, and wait for all of this to blow over. Okay, go to the lake, get stronger, take that guy's horse, go to the castle, deal with Margit, grab our maiden, go back here and wait for all of this to blow over. Go to the catacombs, get even stronger, take the horse, kill Margit, grab maiden, go to a safe place and wait for all of this to blow over. And there I was freshly into the new game and already about to give up after what seemed like to be dying for the hundredth time. And then something strange happened. Out of nowhere, a vision appeared that said, I am you from the future. Oh, are you here to tell me that I'm a big failure? What? No. But, but I, I, can't, I can't even, it's too hard. Worry not and take days. Listen closely, here is what you do. And so I said, it was done. I stole a horse from a random farm and rode to the south of Limbre. Here, I picked up the Morning Star after peacefully negotiating, I mean murdering the creatures guarding the carriage. Then I took a quick detour through this portal at the third church of America, teleporting me to Kalid, where I find myself standing in front of this Hold giant up. bird creature that I politely run around to not disturb its afternoon nap. <laughs> Traveling south, I put my newfound weapon to good use by repeatedly slapping this giant sleeping dragon with it until it died and gave me what I was looking for. Those sweet, sweet runes. I got back to Limgrave and decided to do what my teacher said I never could in real life. Become intelligent by mindlessly playing a video game. Now having tremendous magical power is great, but you're nothing with it when you don't have a weapon to channel it into. So I went back to the swamp of Kalid and raided the overrun village for my brand new meteorite staff and its rock sling spell. A powerful ability that allows me to unearth some rocks and throw them into the face of my adversaries with just a swish and flick of my staff. It was then time to upgrade my arsenal of spells and travel to Liurnia of the Lakes. In Liurnia, which by the way is a beautiful place, I learned to cast magic flying swords from the Turtle Pope. Because yeah, that's the thing in this game. Next, I traveled to the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, hoping to learn some extra spells. However, the doors were closed and all I could find was this cave where I was met by two crystal guardians that I swiftly beat up with my newfound powers. Looking in the back of the room, I found an elevator leading up to a tower of the academy where a scroll of ancient text wow. gave me the ability to enhance the ground I stand on with magical energy, making my attacks even stronger. Swiftly traveling back to everyone's favorite place, is where I learned there would be a city with a lot of magical potential. In the city I found various towers with braziers that could be lit and eventually opened the door inside the city. After showing the guards inside that you don't mess with a jellyfish and a green haired guy with amazing wizarding powers, I found my second staff, once belonging to the great sorcerer Lusat. After that I raided some castles for two magical parts of a medallion that would allow me to... <clears throat> That would allow me to use the giant Dectus lift in Lyurnia to travel to the beautiful heights of the Altus Plateau. From there, I rode my trusty horse through the dangerous terrain, climbed steep edges of mountains, traversed fiery pathways, and crossed over on villages filled with creatures out for blood. And there it was. Right there is what I found what I came for. A legendary master of magic that would surely teach me how to become the ultimate wizard, the sorcerer supreme. Not not that one. It took a while, however, to realize that I was talking to a corpse because they uh, didn't respond to my questions. Yo, uh, pineapple on pizza, is that yes or no? It was only upon closer inspection that I could find a scroll firmly clamped into the cold, dead hands of this once great wizard. And in it, I found what I was looking for. Great magic. I made my way back down the mountain when I ran into someone else trying to kill me. A hideous monstrosity that seemed to only have one thing in mind, burying my corpse in an avalanche of destruction. I tried to make it disappear with my magical powers, 
but instead made my trusty steed vanish in thin air. Left no choice and only on foot, I managed to put the creature to rest by violently pelting rocks at them with my staff. The creature left behind a variety of magical items that would surely be useful. With no time to spare, I stole another horse and made my way back to Limgrave. I still had to free my maiden and slay Margarita after all. However, in Leurnia, I was once again stopped by a tree-like creature, this time a smaller one that kept attacking my feeble body with blasts and beams of light. Though it put up a good fight, I eventually took it down with my arsenal of magical homing swords and found another item on its court. Yeah, Combined with a previously found tier, I could mix these items into a concoction that would surely make me the ultimate wizard. With all my newfound powers, I got back to Limgrave and did the honorable thing that any legend of history would do. Revenge. Revenge. Uh, <laughs> 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 With those things settled, I made my way back into the castle where I once again was greeted by Margaret. However, this time he was the one who would be biting the dust. Deeper into the castle, I found another madman, this one calling himself Godric. After I politely asked where my maiden would be, he decided I was just... And so I saw no other option than to microwave his majesty into a pile of smoldering ashes. I felt like he was holding back something though, but we'll never know what that would be. Unfortunately for me, there still was no trace of my maiden. She must have been in another castle. After this small setback, I continued my journey, again traveling to the amazing place of her. Since I heard of a festival being held there, surely someone out there would be able to help me find my maiden. My disappointment was unmeasurable. Not a single attendant at the party knew where my beloved maiden would be. All they could do was go on and on about a great fight versus some guy named Radan. And before I knew it, I was standing in this huge battlefield, fearing for my life as the huge general on a very tiny horse marched into the battlefield and started chucking spears the size of skyscrapers at me. As told by the clown that introduced me to this place, this general would have been driven insane by the rot, you know, the same thing that the entirety of is filled with and is now just fighting anyone. However, the fight didn't prove much of a challenge as it would seem my sorcery was once again so strong that my enemy just evaporated into thin air. It's gone. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to position myself more advantageous and take a page out of the art of war. Make idiots distract your enemy, then blast them with a laser. Sun Tzu. And just as that was done, the general melted faster than the rot that was consuming his body. However, as he died, it turns out that Radan himself was holding the whole sky together and his demise meant a lot of stars crashing down onto this damned place, certainly creating problems for the future. But those are worries for later. Right now, I still had to find my maiden. And since both the idiots at Stormvale Castle and this madman weren't able to give me any answers, it was time to try and get into the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. The one place where I surely would find enough information on how to get my maiden back. After finding the entrance, I made my way to the main tower of the academy, blending in with the other sorcerers to not attract unwanted attention, only to be stopped by a giant wolf with a magical sword in its mouth. Luckily it was not something my magical homing swords and some dodgy trickery could fix and kill. Crossing the worn down structures of the academy, I finally made it to the grand study, to be greeted by a bunch of creepy students and a woman floating in the middle of the room. And since these students started throwing books and candles at me, I whipped out my sword and swiftly turned them into student sushi. This brought down her majesty from the safety of her bubble, but my magical spells were not able to harm her in the slightest, resulting in me taking the chandelier to the back courtesy of those pesky students. And it is at this moment that my staff started whispering to me. Just use me and the power of the earth. Realizing throwing rocks is basically not a magical spell, I used the rocks to burn down Renala's health and then she got teleported into this Shadow Realm location by someone named Rani the Witch. and then immediately gave me a taste of my own medicine by blasting my body to smithereens with her own microwave beam. The second time around, however, I managed to dodge it and buried her under an avalanche of rocks 
defeating her, much to the pleasure of my staff. See, I told you it would work. After politely declining her offer to <coughs> rebirth me, I made my way to Caria Manor, a beautiful estate located in the north of Leonia, to continue the search for my maiden. After ransacking the manor for new weapons and spells, I ran into the magic wielding Royal Knight Loretta and prepared for an intense battle of sorcery. This time around, I experienced what it felt like to be on the receiving end of magical homing swords and a giant magical arrow. But in the end, I managed to vanquish her with my final breath. One fast respawn later, and I could already feel the magic I siphoned from her course through my veins. This is exactly what I needed. These spells would surely make me ascend beyond belief. To become the ultimate form. To become the once and great... Thank you everyone for watching this video. This one's been in the works for a long time. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe we'll continue it. And special thanks to my grandparents for doing some of the voices in this video. See you in the next one.